Cool. Uh, it's a great honor to be here at the Open Compute Project Global Summit. Hi, everyone. My name is Carol Jing Wu. I'm currently a research scientist at Meta AI. Hi, everybody. My name is Uday Gupta. I'm a sixth year PhD student at Harvard University and also a visiting research scientist at Meta AI. Please. Cool. So in 2018, data centers consume over 1% of the overall global energy demand and it is about 30 to 50% of the overall energy consumption of the entire ICT industry. There are many reasons why we should expect this overall computing market to continue its growth during the next decades. First, only half of the world population is currently online. There are many emerging use cases that will drive the computing industry forward. For example, artificial intelligence, virtual augmented reality, autonomous driving scientific computing applications. Finally, Moore's law has really slowed down. What that means is that hyperscale data center uh, PUE efficiency is also quite optimal, and it's going to be much more challenged to realize larger efficiency improvements across the entire computing landscape. Next, please. And so to respond to the growing demands of computing, uh, the research community and the industry have explored the design space of sustainable computings in the past couple of years. Next, please. And so how do we actually go about achieving sustainable computing future going forward? We've heard many talks, but here we're going to uh, look at a quite interesting question. What does computing's carbon footprint coming from? Um, uh, computing's carbon footprint can come from energy consumed by running applications on the hardware, which we call operational carbon footprints. It can also come from manufacturing uh, system hardware components, which here we call the embodied carbon footprint. So in this work, we are taking a data-driven approach to quantify computing's carbon footprint by focusing on two unique systems in this computing spectrum. We are going to look at client computing devices as well as data center. So here in the slide, uh, we first uh, use this uh, life cycle analysis or LCA to analyze the uh, carbon footprint for Apple's uh, client devices. We find that the manufacturing emissions dominate Apple's product. Here, hardware manufacturing accounts for 74% of Apple's overall emission, of which 33% is coming from integrated circuits such as SOC, DRAM, and NAND flash. In comparison, operational use for Apple's device accounts for only 19% of the total emission. Next, please. And to understand sources of carbon emission at the data center scale, we use the greenhouse gas protocol. The GHG protocol is a pretty standard mechanism used across by the entire industry. It categorizes emissions into three uh, scopes. And here we find that um, Meta's scope two emissions have been greatly reduced between 2017 and 2019 on the x-axis. This is because data center uh, operations are increasingly powered with renewable energy. That is the case across the industry as well. We find that scope three dominates Facebook's carbon emission. And overall, we inherited approximately 50% of our uh, carbon emission from supply chain. So similar to carbon footprint characterization for client computing, a significant portion of client uh, cloud's environmental footprint comes from how we're manufacturing today. So now knowing the lay of the land for computing's carbon footprint, how do we go about reducing the overall footprints of computing? Let's hear from Wooden. Thank you. Yeah, so we've been talking first about uh, 
where our computing's carbon footprint is coming from. And the next phase of our talk is going to be about how can we address the rising computing footprint from computing and what sort of uh, design or optimization opportunities are available. And is it possible to have the slides back? Thank you. Yeah, so the first um, area that we really need to think about from a software and a hardware perspective is looking at efficiency optimization. So efficiency optimizations are a crucial component to enabling sustainable computers going um, into the future. And we really think about efficiency from three different angles. First is system efficiency, where we need to design leaner systems in order to reduce both the operational and the embodied emissions that we saw earlier. We need to design more efficient applications and algorithms that can reduce the system demands, both from the operational and embodied infrastructure perspective. And then finally, we need to design and use uh, data more efficiently in order to reduce the burden from the application algorithm developers and also from the systems perspective when designing solutions. Next slide. But efficiency optimizations alone are not going to be enough. So one way to think about this is to look at Jevons paradox. And what Jevons paradox tells us is that with higher efficiency optimizations can also be overshadowed with higher application de demands going into the future. So as an example of this, we can take a look at one particular application area of artificial intelligence. So on the x-axis here, we're showing that performance is improving in terms of um, floating point operations per second or system performance uh, by a factor of two times. And on the y-axis, we're seeing that given the system uh, improvements, model size has also been growing by at least two times, if not larger. And we're seeing this both in open source models and also production scale um, AI models as well. For example, in uh, open source, uh, state-of-the-art natural language processing models have grown by almost three orders of magnitude in just the last two years as well as the size of Meta and Facebook's production recommendation models have grown by an order of magnitude in the last three years. And this really means that in addition to efficiency optimizations, we need to go further and think about how can we design systems from the ground up in order to enable environmentally sustainable computing platforms. Next slide, please. Could we, yeah, thank you. Um, and so the way that we're thinking about how do we enable environmentally sustainable computing infrastructures is in three key areas. First is enabling metrics and accounting in order to quantify what the carbon footprint or the environmental impact of different computing infrastructures are. How can we optimize these systems at scale? And how can we design systems in order to amortize the carbon um, footprint given the high embodied uh, emission rates that we saw earlier. And first, we're going to focus on the metrics and accounting. And so what this slide is telling us and, and showing us is different perspectives or different ways that we can enable um, more precise and, and productive ways of uh, enabling carbon accounting and environmental accounting for computing platforms. So the first is enabling end-to-end um, -end product, product lifecycle analyses. This is coming from the system level perspective where we can um, quantify the carbon emissions across the entire system for manufacturing, transport, product use, and recycling. The second is from component level up. This is thinking about application level processors, memories, uh, networking components, storage components, and other integrated circuits that are crucial to our computing infrastructures. And then finally, we need to design open source models and tools in order to enable the broader community in order to quantify the carbon emissions and the environmental impact of different hardware platforms. Next slide, please. And in addition to enabling these different metrics and accounting uh, strategies, we also need to make them uh, available to the broader community. And this means engaging with different organizations in order to standardize these practices. This includes organizations like the Open Compute Project that we're a part of today, um, MLPER from the um, AI community that is trying to standardize ways that we can benchmark the performance of machine learning systems, and also the research community that has started to look into how can we design tools in order to systematically report the energy and carbon footprint 
of different applications and systems. And for the final portion of the talk, I'll hand it back to Carol to talk about optimization at scale. Cool, thank you. So in addition to the optimization opportunities that would have mentioned, they are optimization opportunities at scale that we can leverage in order to reduce computing's carbon footprint. So uh, as more renewable energies are getting used in data center levels, what will the system stack look like in order to support computation and energy resources with this intermittent nature? Next, please. And taking a step further, knowing the dominating source of computing's carbon footprint is shifting from operational use to manufacturing of systems and hardware, how will this significant embodied carbon cost influence the next generation cloud infrastructure? If we were designing uh, infrastructures from the ground up, how should we take into account system modularity, reliability, energy efficiency on top of all the performance requirements of workloads that we have? to make computings in general greener and more environmentally sustainable. Next, please. Over the past decade, we've seen digital technologies to have profound influence on the societal well-beings of humans and fuel significant economic growth. Computing technologies continue to thrive in all forms. Next. In this talk, we characterize the lay of the land for computing's carbon footprint using this data-driven approach that we look at we find that the dominating source of computing's carbon footprint is shifting from operational energy consumption to embodied energy. And so all growth exponential will have to slow down. So in order to continue scale the growth of technology sustainably, Udit and I share with you three important directions today. First, we need the tools and metrics for us to assess the environmental footprint of systems. Second, we have great optimization opportunities to improve computing's environmental footprint. Finally, we must take into account the increasing dominance of computing's embodied carbon cost and have environmental sustainability as the first design principle and optimization objective when we design the next generation systems. Next, please. Thanks so much for your attention today. <laughs>